The hormonal control center of the body can be found at the base of the brain in a tiny pea-sized structure called the pituitary gland and an overlying region called the hypothalamus. Because the pituitary controls many other endocrine glands, it's known as the master gland of the body. However, the hypothalamus wields even greater power because it controls the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland consists of two distinctly different parts. One part, the anterior pituitary, originates from glandular tissue. The other part, the posterior pituitary, consists of neural tissue and is essentially an extension of the brain. As an extension of the brain, the posterior pituitary contains axons from neurons in the hypothalamus. These neurons produce two hormones released from the posterior pituitary. The neurons that extend into the posterior pituitary produce either the hormone antidiuretic hormone, ADH, or oxytocin. These hormones are made in the cell bodies and then transported to the axon terminals. The axon terminals abut tiny capillaries in the posterior pituitary. If a neuron is stimulated and fires an action potential, the neuron releases its hormones from the axon terminals. The hormones quickly enter the capillaries and flow with the blood into the general circulation of the body. The ADH-producing neurons respond to signals relating to thirst and water regulation. ADH stimulates the kidneys to conserve water. Although water conservation is its major role, ADH also constricts peripheral blood vessels, which increases blood pressure. For this reason, ADH is thus also known as vasopressin. The oxytocin-producing neurons respond to stimulation from a suckling baby. When these neurons fire action potentials, they release oxytocin into the general circulation. Oxytocin reaches the mammary glands, triggering them to express milk. These neurons are also activated during childbirth, during which oxytocin triggers uterine contractions. Unlike the posterior pituitary, the anterior pituitary consists of glandular tissue. The gland consists of numerous cell types, which specialize in making and releasing specific hormones. However, these hormones are only released, or in some cases inhibited from being released, in response to hypothalamic hormones. An elaborate web of capillaries called the hypothalamic pituitary portal system connects the glandular cells with neurons from the hypothalamus. The neurons abut the capillaries and, when stimulated, release hormones into the circulation. The hypothalamic hormones travel directly to the cells of the anterior pituitary. Here, a specific hormone affects a specific type of anterior pituitary cell. Each cell type, in turn, produces and releases its own hormones into the general circulation. Once released, the anterior pituitary hormones travel throughout the body to their various targets. The hypothalamic hormones are generally called releasing hormones because most of them trigger the anterior pituitary to release hormones. Some, however, inhibit hormone release, as indicated by their specific names. The anterior pituitary hormones are called tropic hormones. Thyroid-stimulating hormone triggers the thyroid gland to release thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones accelerate metabolism, thereby increasing body heat, and enhance growth during development. Follicle-stimulating hormone stimulates the gonads to secrete estrogens in females and testosterone in males and to produce gametes, eggs, or sperm. In females, LH stimulates ovaries to release eggs and prepares the uterine lining for the implantation of a fertilized egg. In males, LH stimulates cells of the testes to produce testosterone. Prolactin promotes mammary development for lactation in female mammals. Growth hormone, also known as somatotropin, acts throughout the body to stimulate protein metabolism. In this way, it influences the growth of cells and tissues. ACTH controls the production and release of steroid hormones from the cortex of the adrenal glands. The main steroid released in response to ACTH is cortisol, a type of glucocorticoid. Glucocorticoids help the body tackle stressful events by increasing the levels of glucose, 
a cellular fuel in the bloodstream. MSH stimulates the production of the pigment melanin in specialized cells called melanocytes in skin and hair. In some animals, it influences the distribution of pigments from granules called melanophores. The hypothalamus initiates a chain of events that control the endocrine system. It releases hormones that trigger the anterior pituitary to release more hormones. These hormones, in turn, control a variety of endocrine organs, such as the adrenal glands. Although the hypothalamus drives the system, the hypothalamus is kept in check by a negative feedback loop. Let's look at a negative feedback loop using the hormones of the adrenal cortex as an example. In response to stress signals, the hypothalamus releases corticotropin-releasing hormone, or CRH. CRH triggers the anterior pituitary to release adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH. ACTH, in turn, triggers the adrenal cortex to release a steroid hormone called cortisol. Cortisol has many effects on different target organs in the body, but the primary one is to increase glucose in the blood. This sugar is an energy resource that allows the body to respond to physiological or psychological stress. In addition to acting on organs and tissues throughout the body, the hormones travel through the bloodstream back to the brain, where they inhibit the release of CRH. Without CRH, the anterior pituitary does not release ACTH. In addition to this effect, the cortisol also acts directly on the anterior pituitary to inhibit ACTH release. Without ACTH, the adrenal cortex stops releasing cortisol. This interaction is an example of a negative feedback loop. In this loop, the output of the system, the hormones from the adrenal cortex, ultimately diminish the input from the system, the hormones from the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary. This system turns on cortisol release, but then turns it off before cortisol levels get too high. 